So I sent you a list of supplies as every time I send out supplies, I'll try to explain what I'm using them for. So if you don't have them, you don't feel the need to get them um, or you have something to substitute. So you should have some watercolors. You can have tube, pan, pencils, whatever you want to use. Um, this is called a pan. This is a beginner set. And the top of your most watercolor sets usually is a palette. So it might have these bubbles and things like that. It's to be used just like one of these. So you see how they're kind of the same? But, and notice I leave my paint in there. I always, this is actually a student set from, that I pulled out from, from a class. But we don't wash this out because you can always activate watercolor. So if I add water to this, I'll have yellow and orange and blue. And then if I wanna mix these, I can make my own green because yellow and blue make green. So you just need something um, and you don't have to use it because we're not gonna be using a ton, but if you wanna mix a color, you're gonna need a palette because you don't wanna do it right on top of these. And you need brushes, water, you need something to tape one of your quadrants to, one of your pieces of paper to. I just, in the studio, we use wooden boards that I put out for all the students, but in a pinch, I use cardboard at home. This is just corrugated cardboard. And the other thing was a baking sheet works well because usually it's flat and you can always, um, you can always just stick your paper right to it. Um, and if you get any watercolor, watercolor is washable versus acrylic. So you can just wash it right off your baking sheet. And then I wanted you to take a piece of watercolor paper and cut it into four. So this is what I mean. We'd, you'd end up with four little sheets like this, like one, you see? So that's because we're gonna do a couple different things. I'm gonna take you through some modern art and then show you how to make it representational. So representational is something you can see or identify. Modern art is something that could be anything in the world or nothing at all. It just could be something to look at. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of our quadrants of paper and we are going to tape it down. Now there's a way you tape watercolor paper and I'm gonna show you. So I'm gonna put my cardboard, I left it down so I could show you all my things. I'm gonna tape my cardboard up here so you can see it. And I hope it stays. I usually don't try to tape cardboard up here, but I'm gonna do this. Okay, so this is how you tape a watercolor paper down. You tape it on all sides, okay? Is everyone ready? I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna put it in the middle and I'm gonna take my pick tape and run it along the top side. And I'm, I have a little bit of a border. Can you see that? And I'm gonna do that on all four sides. So, so I tape it right here. See? See how it gets, I'll bring you a little bit closer so you can see at a nice wide view. But see how we have that little edge right there? We're gonna do that on all four sides. While you're doing it, I'll tell you why. We're going to be covering our whole small piece of paper with watercolor. And watercolor paper is meant to hold water, but at some point it still will buckle and wave. So if we're gonna cover a whole sheet, we want to tape it down. So we're gonna tape it just like that. And you can use your, I'm gonna leave my tape because I might have to take it off because my watercolor will run vertically, but you're gonna put it up and we're gonna tape it on all four sides. You leave it flat on your table because you're gonna be painting watercolor. Mine is only up on the wall so you can see it, okay? So everyone take your whatever surface, if you have a piece of cardboard or a baking sheet, you can use any, I use, again, we have large wooden sheets that I've cut. That is what, that is what I use with all our watercolor students here. Anytime we're going to tape. If you're ever buying watercolor, watercolor comes in, um, I wanna make sure we're not missing people. Um, watercolor comes even in pads where they glue all the sides and you have to scrape your pieces of paper. It does this effect for you. So it's called a watercolor pad, um, not a loose leaf pad, but a watercolor 
it'll just, it'll feel like a pad, a solid pad and you've got to cut your papers up. Okay, so we had that and then you should have some type of permanent marker. I'm watching to make sure everyone has theirs taped. So the reason you need a permanent marker is because we're using watercolor. If I had a water-based marker, what's gonna happen? We're gonna, our water base is gonna run because we're using watercolor. So if I used a blue water-based pen or a red, that's gonna run into my yellows and my colors and everything like that. So while everyone finishes taping, have your uh, pen ready. And I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about what we're doing, okay? So this is a type of contemporary art. Keep taping your paper till you've got it all taped on four edges. Type of contemporary art called neurographic art. Neurographic, because it's for your head. So when you do this, people use this for all types of things, but they usually do it to relax, to be creative, or they do, do it as a warm up for art. And so see how it's got black lines everywhere and we've got all kinds of shapes and then we're gonna fill it in with color. We're gonna start with this as our warm up, and then I'm gonna show you how to use this in something you're familiar with. Something that I think you will have a lot of fun making today. So does everyone have theirs taped down? Are we good to go? Nope, we still have one more piece. If you don't have it all, what happens is this tape line actually creates a border. So when you gently remove it, when your paper's all dry, you'll have a nice little white frame around there because the water can't get where the paint is, or where the tape is. The paint can't, the water paint can't get where the tape is. There we go, I've got it out, okay? Let's see, how are we doing? Are we good to go? So neurographic art, it has lots of purposes, but it's also a form of contemporary art. And we're doing some modern art in this class, but we're gonna take it and take it somewhere else. So um, let me make sure we're all good to go. Okay, yep, everyone good? Everyone have your, your permanent marker? Okay, we're gonna play something like a game. Now, this is something that I do this class with adults and kids. I actually will be doing this class later on with um, middle schoolers. And I did a class, I've used this class with all adults. So, and I've used this class with very young ages. So this is something that translates well, no matter what. And if you like it, you'll be able to create it on your own. So the first thing we're gonna do is I want you to draw three circles on your paper and they can go off the page onto your tape, but they need to overlap. And this is what I mean. So I'm gonna draw one and they don't have to be perfect circles. They can be different sizes, but see how they overlap? So draw three circles, okay? Good to go? Okay. Vivian, are you good? Okay. So now I want you to draw one triangle and I want it to overlap a circle. It can go off your paper like this. I want you to draw one triangle. Triangle has three sides. Does not need to be perfect like that. Okay. So we've got three circles, one triangle. Now I want you to make one oval that goes all the way across touching one side from another. So, so mine. Now here's the nice thing. These shapes that I'm making, you can make up your own shapes. So you can have all different kinds of shapes. You can do all different, types of overlaps and sizes. I just kind of want you to know how it goes. Okay, the next thing is I want you to draw one squiggly line that goes from the top to the bottom. Okay. So 
So we've got three circles, one triangle, one oval that goes all the way side to side, and one squiggly line that goes top from the bottom. Now, if you don't have one of those, it's okay, because this is where you get to design your own. Now we're gonna do one squiggly line that goes across horizontally, about where our horizon line would be. Squiggly line there. So we've got circles, triangles, ovals, squiggly line. I want you to put two more squiggly lines anywhere you want to. I'm gonna do mine squiggling across that corner. And I'm going to do another one going down like that. Okay, this is where it's a little bit tricky but we're gonna look for anything that has a corner and that can even be on a circle. How can, cor how can circles have corners? I want you to look closely at this. I'm gonna pull it off so you can see it. Do you see how in this circle, there is a corner right there? And anywhere I have a corner, I'm gonna round it off just like that. You see how I did that? Oh, there's another corner. I'm gonna round that off. Here's a corner, I'm gonna round it off. Everywhere I find a corner, I'm going to round it off. So this is a corner, I'm gonna round that off. This is a corner. Every place a line touches a shape or a shape touches another shape, there's probably a corner. So fill those in and we're rounding corners. What you want is to not have any hard edges. So we're rounding all those corners. You don't have to, once you get outside the tape, don't worry about doing any more. That was just for our exercise because you won't see it. So just go up to the edge of the tape and anywhere you find it, you're going to round a corner. Even if I have my triangle, I've got to round that edge like this. We don't want any sharp edges. So we're gonna go everywhere and just round our corners using our pen. Now the one thing is the good thing is that we're on just for future use. When you're using a permanent marker, it usually doesn't go through watercolor paper, but it will go through other paper. So if you're drawing on top of something, put something underneath your paper. So, but we've got something underneath our paper because we're taped down to our cardboard. Okay, so it's basically everywhere the lines touch, there's a corner. We're rounding those off. All over. This is why I had you cut a small sheet because this would take us forever if we did one this big. But you can, after class, you can go do it and do a really big one and you all do it together and everyone does that. You can do it with other friends. You can make your own neurographic art design. So I'm just rounding everything. I'm gonna put this back up now that you get the idea. And I'm gonna do it right up here, but see how you can tell everywhere my corners, they're much darker. So you want yours to look like that where you, your line comes in and then your corners are darker because that's where you've rounded out. So you filled in some space, rounding out everywhere a line touches because it usually makes a corner. While you're doing this, I have to tell you, I got a puppy this week. It's the cutest puppy you've ever seen. I've never had a puppy before. I will send you a picture in the email of my puppy. He's so, she, it's a she, sorry, she's so cute. So. But it's been very busy at our house because Having a new puppy is a lot of work. I'm finding out. So, there we go. All right. 
technically the puppy is for my boys, but let's be honest. It's mom is watching the puppy all the time. Okay, so we're doing this and see how it gets thick on all those corners and it's making, see how your design starts changing everywhere, you round those corners where they intersect. So this is why you have a smaller piece of paper so that we don't have to have permanent marker usage for very long and that it won't take you forever and ever to do this because it can, okay. It's very relaxing. Okay, I'm getting lots of mine done. How is everyone doing on theirs? I think I have most of my, so all your corner, oops, I see one in the, there's a corner right there. And there's a corner right there. We missed a few. So you're just rounding them off and they should end up being, it's okay if your lines get thicker and now you can do this, see how it changes our shapes and we start getting more organic by taking away those corners. See how we go? So I'll bring you in close so you can see. So all our corners, it's as though we made thicker and darker. Now here comes the fun part. And then I'm gonna show you how we use this in making something else. We're gonna fill in all our spaces. If you're not done rounding your corners, don't worry. You can do that when your watercolor is dry. You can come back and do it on top. You can use your permanent marker underneath your watercolor when your paper is dry and on top of your watercolor when your paper is dry. So did you notice there was a key to that? Your paper has to be dry to use this marker. So grab your watercolors. And you can get any size brush that you think will fill the spaces. And I want you to pick, I'm gonna help you, but you can pick any color you want. Um, I want you to pick a blue and to activate it, you see how I just put water in the pan. Any blue you want and add water. Watercolor is essential for adding. You need your water to make it work, so. Can you see how wet it is? I'm trying to show you in the light. Then I'm just gonna pick three non-touching spaces to paint in and hope that this does not drip down my... Okay. I have to. Now with watercolor, what you wanna do is you want it to be uneven because then you end up with this kind of beautiful play. Do you see over here in our inspiration piece, how you have, it almost looks like stained glass where it comes and goes. I'm gonna fill in three spaces, not touching each other with my blue. This reminds me a little bit of something we have done before. So a little bit of our modern art game. We played a game last week with our shading. I'm gonna fill in this corner. So you're filling in any shape you want to. You've got big shapes, small shapes. And the nice thing is if you paint over the black marker, you can't see it. So it works just fine. And if you're, if you fall behind and you don't have everything on there, don't worry about it. You can always come back to it. I'm going a little bit speedy on this because I want us to get to the main, it's like a two part lesson. We have this lesson and then we have how to use this lesson. So I wanna get this done in lesson 30. So sorry, I'm kind of flying, but don't worry. If you don't finish it, you can come back to it later. I'm gonna make a pink or a purple, your choice. And I'm gonna fill in, oh, I think I'm gonna fill in five spots, two big and three little. How about that? So I'm gonna take pink. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna fill in five spots. If you like pink, 
you can fill in six or seven. You can fill in two big, well, kind of a big one. And then how about this one? And then oh, that one will look good down there. Maybe this one right here. And then, hmm, let's see, how about that one right there? Get where we're going. Okay, so I've got three blue, five pink. If you love pink or blue, do more. Just try to make your colors not touch if possible. I think I'm going to grab, since we're doing warm colors, I'm going to grab an orange. And here's the thing, you can go ahead and just start filling all these in. You don't have to do it. If you just want to start, the idea is to fill them all in. Remember, we taped it down because we're going to be all in. My orange looks a little red here. Must be a red orange. So I'm going to fill in maybe three or four spots with this. Then I'm probably going to jump to a green. So you, but you can start filling in anywhere you want. You just want to fill in all your spaces. Okie doke. That's the direction we're headed. We're headed to something like this. Fill in all our spaces. And then stay tuned because. You'll never believe where we're going to go. I'm so excited about it. I'll add a couple more. Maybe I'll fill in some little ones here. How about that? Okay. Add some more. You can always, with watercolor, you can layer it too. So if you decide you don't like a color, you can let it dry. And you'll always see that color underneath, but you can layer it up. I'm gonna go with a green now. And then I think I'm gonna go yellow after this. So your goal is to fill in all your spaces. All your little spaces here, all like that. I'll do three or four with green. You take it right up and this should make a nice big wide edge you can fill in if you go over your line it's okay it'll blend in so three or four with green here remember we're using a watercolor paper because watercolor paper can hold the water we use a regular paper and start chewing up your fibers a lot so I've got four here. I'll fill in these two little ones right there. I technically did six because I filled in some little ones. Mine are starting to get filled in. Now, I also had you include some, uh, some paper towels. If you want with your paper towels, if it gets too dark, you can always blot it like this. You can use it to wipe your brush off. You can use it to pull some of your color. Like if you just want to get the little edge, you can do that. But that way you have the paper towel in case you need it for anything you're doing. Okay, I'm gonna go with a yellow. Just keep filling them in. You're good. Everywhere you go, keep filling them in. Okay, and one. Gonna fill in oh, again like four or five. See what it's looking like. See how we got this from here. And you'll have your modern art. And oh, I'm gonna fill in several with yellow. I like how the yellow looks on here. It's nice and bright. So Oh, we'll get that one. Okay. I've got a whole bunch with yellow. I think I will. Hmm. Maybe I will pick a purple to fill in the rest of mine. And I think 
Oh, I have a few that are touching, so I'll have to go with another one. But I'm going to take a purple in. I'm going to try and do any ones that aren't touching. If you use purple before where your pink is. And don't worry, if you don't finish this, you can come back to it. But we're about to jump off. So you can always come back and fill it in. I don't want you to feel worried about it or any stress or pressure. Just get done what you can because this is really just a teaching tool. This is to get us started. And then we're going to cruise off and go do something really neat. And I want you to stay with me. So. Oh, I have several touching. I'm going to have to get over. Let's see. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Now we'll leave me with three more. Maybe I'll pick another green. You just fill in where you want. So I'll do this. This is kind of a different color. Kind of an army green. It's dark. It's not the prettiest watercolor, but it's really good in landscapes. Okay, keep filling in, don't worry. Don't worry if you don't have it all done. Keep doing it while I'm talking to you because you can kind of do it and listen to me. So what, how did we make this piece of art? This is called neurographic art. So what you're doing is you're drawing all sorts of shapes, interlocking them so that they cross over each other lines, circles, triangles, ovals, and then you're rounding all the corners to remove all the hard edges. Then you fill it in with colors that you want to create this abstract art. But this technique is really great to use in, ready? Making butterflies. Now, how do you make a butterfly doing this? Are you ready to make some butterflies? Okay, so, but I want you to look closely. Look closely at this. Does this look a little bit like what we just did? You see how that edge, you see how these lines cross? We're gonna use this type of art. That's why I was like, stick with me, stick with me because we're gonna do something really fun. We're gonna take the techniques from neurographic art modern art that just is lines and squiggles and really cool and fun. And we're gonna turn it into, just like this is the caterpillar, we're gonna turn it into the butterfly. So what you could do is you can just take your cardboard, we're not gonna pull it off yet. You just take your cardboard and you can set it off to the side, even if you're not done and we'll let it dry. We're gonna let it dry. And I want you to take one of your quadrants and you don't need to tape it down. You can just put it in front of you. I'm gonna have a bigger sheet so that you can see it. And I'm going to put it like a landscape. Can you see that? So I'm going, putting it lengthwise. So we did our neurographic art could go portrait or landscape. So this is portrait and this is landscape. So portrait. Landscape. You do one of these. Here. So, seat, please. Okay. Yeah, yep. Okie doke. So all you have to do is grab one. And you have four there. Number one, we needed we needed a half, cut in half, so that you can do as many butterflies or you can do this kind of art on your other two. We're gonna do two of your quadrants, but I needed you to cut it into four pieces so you had small enough pieces to do the neurographic, okay? So you don't, I am taping mine up just so you see it. We're not gonna put that much watercolor on it, so we don't need to tape it down. Remember we taped ours to our board because did we cover it all? Yep, we did. So now what you're gonna need for this is you're gonna need your sheet of watercolor paper, your little one, you're gonna need your pencil and keep your watercolors handy and your brush and your water. And then let me tape, oh, let me tape this up so you can see it. I'm so excited about this. I just knew, I knew everyone would be so excited when we got to butterflies. I love it. There's all sorts of bugs on here, but 
once you do the butterflies. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a carrot. <laughs> well, you're gonna draw something that kind of looks like a carrot. Is everyone ready? You got your pencils? In the middle of your paper, just smack dab in the middle, you're gonna draw something that's wider at the top and comes to a point like this. And use your pencil for this. So see, it looks kind of like a carrot. Then I want you to draw it from your carrot. So see about how right here, we're not quite at the top. I'm gonna to move you a little bit closer and then I'll move you back to paint because this is, okay, there we go. We're gonna draw a line that curves up like this. So see how I started below where the carrot is and then I come up like that, okay? but it has a little arch to it, a little bit of an arch. And we're gonna do it on the other side, same thing. Let's come up. And I'm about the same. You wanna try and make them about the same length. Now, when you're drawing, you can always use something to measure. So sometimes I'll just do this and I'll move it. And that looks the same length. Or sometimes I'll look at something on my pencil or I'll pull, I'll say, oh, let me lay across here. Oh, how is that as long as my eraser? You know, I'll use all sorts of guides to do that. So now we're going to grab this side and I want you to curve it around about that far. See what we just did? And you know, we're going to go on to the other side. Now, all these lines have a little bit of a curve, just like what we drew on our neurographic, except the triangle. See how we come back like that? So we've got this top arch that comes away from our carrot like that. We've got this, which is a little bit of a curve, and then we're gonna bring it back up. So it's gonna come in like this. See that? So see how this point is higher than this point? We're gonna come down like that. We've got our top two wings. We drew those together. Now these are kind of like ovals that come off. So remember our carrot, that's our body. These are our top wings. We're gonna come and we're gonna make an oval that's gonna come into about right here and it's come, gonna come out right there. So it's gonna look like this. Remember you did an oval on the other one? You're gonna come like an oval right there. See that? And then we're gonna come like an oval over here. So we've got our two wings on the top, our carrot in the middle, which is our body, right there. Now, look at this, we're gonna do a little extension. So at the tip of our oval, we're gonna draw a line out like this. See that? Got our line out. And we'll draw another line out like that. It's just a little extension right there. Now we're about to start getting into where we did our movement before. I've been using a pencil for all of this. In a minute, we're gonna grab your uh, permanent marker and you can do it. So you have your top two wings, which came up, came around, came back in. You've got your oval, you've got this, and you've got that. Now, what I want you to do is give me a little bit of a ridge. So it's like this. I want you to give me an edge. So I'm following the shape it's like a C, but I started about right here and I come back in right there. Notice where the oval comes in. I'm gonna come in about right there. And we're gonna do that on both sides. This is gonna be the edge of our wings, okay? Now we're gonna do the same thing along the bottom. We're gonna come like this.
now. So when you have your wings, I'm going to switch from my pencil and I use charcoal here. So if you see it get into my watercolor, that's why, just so you can see it. And I'm going to get my permanent marker. Okay, so I'm gonna to switch to my permanent marker. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start drawing circles in here. I'm gonna draw a circle here and I'm gonna draw them on top of each other. See what I'm doing? It's a little bit like when we did this, we're not overlapping, but remember how we put our circles in there? So I'm gonna draw circles, filling that space. So they will be tiny where it's tiny. And I'm gonna fill that whole space and I'm doing this with my permanent marker all the way down, okay? Now, we're gonna fill in the corners, which basically is going to cover it. So all these little edges, all these little hard edges, remember we just did this in our neurographic. So you're basically filling in all your corners So you see what I'm doing? I'm filling in the space around the circles. I'm doing just what we did on the last exercise where we got rid of our corners. Okay. Now guess what we're gonna do on the other side too. You ready? Try and remember where you put your circles on one side, do it on the other. And your circles go line to line and they touch each other right here. And we're gonna fill in that whole area just like we filled our other paper with shapes. And then you know what to do. Fill in your edges. You're gonna fill in all those edges right there. Looking to see how my other artwork is drying. Now that I've got it flat, my color all pooled. There we go. Okay, guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna do it on the bottom. So what we're gonna do is same thing. We're gonna come along and we're gonna put a circle right here on the bottom and then little circles all the way that edge right there. Big circle right where you put that tail extender, that little tail on that wing. So I ended up with five, you may end up more, but our circles get smaller and then we've got to fill in our sharp edges. Now I'm gonna go ahead and color this in black while I'm here. Okay. Now you can take your permanent marker too and you can outline any pencil you've done to tie that in to this point. We won't use our permanent marker for too much more after this, okay? So you can outline. Any of your pencil. We'll use our watercolor for all the rest. But you can tie it all into all your things. Okay. You see your butterfly already? So do you see how this idea, so a lot of modern art takes concepts 
from art, other art, art you know, like you know what a butterfly is, but it takes that concept and it puts it in new ways. So you can look at modern art and you can use those techniques on something you know to draw, or you can take something you know to draw and use those techniques to make modern art. Art interacts all the time. Techniques you use for something, sometimes with a little twist are used for something else. So when you use, learn a little bit of art, you've learned art overall. So when I tell you art history, it's been redone, redone, redone. It could be a thousand years ago and people are still doing it. They're just doing it in new ways. Okay. So hopefully everyone has their uh, butterfly. I'm going to mix a yellow. I want you to mix a good amount of water into your yellow and we're going to fill in everything right now. So we're gonna paint. The whole thing yellow. That includes getting in your dots. And you should be able to paint just like you did before. You should be able to paint over everything. Um, because with permanent marker, if we use water-based marker, this would end up getting all into our yellow. In watercolor, with rare exception, you always build your lighter colors first because you layer in watercolor. Um, so I'm filling in. See how I'm just painting over the black? You're going to fill in the whole. The whole thing. All the way to our black. So I filled in my everywhere I drew, I filled in all my lines and I've got yellow over everything. So now we're gonna learn a little teensy weensy bit of watercolor. And so get it all yellow. Now with watercolor, you never want it really where water sits on your page. You can have your paper wet, but if you can see pools of water, you can use your paper towel to blot that up. You don't wanna get that much water that you can see it moving around um, for this technique. So we've got all of this and now we're gonna shade it. So remember, see our neurographic technique we used on the edge? So I hope you have some kind of brown watercolor. If you have a, does everyone have kind of a brown watercolor? You have a brown you can use? Okay. We're gonna use a brown. I'm gonna show you what I'm using right here. It's this one right there. And I want you to find the smallest brush you have. So we're gonna need a, the tiniest brush everyone has. So find the smallest brush you have and we're going to do, use the brown, so. Your size brush hasn't mattered for anything we've done so far. You could have used a bigger brush or a smaller brush. Why don't you find the smaller brush and you're wetting your brown. Now, anytime you need to make a bunch of watercolor, I usually keep pulling it off and I put it in my palette, but we have little tiny things today. So I've got my brown and this is what I'm gonna do. I'm going to see how I'm pressing it like this. I'm going to add it to my body. I'm gonna add it to one side, but see how I put my, I'm making little splotches like this. So I'm putting it down like that. I'm pouncing it on there, I'm pouncing it on there. You see how it looks like little spots? And I'm going all the way to my black. I want a little bit of my yellow to show. but I'm pouncing it on there. So we're kind of filling it in like that. See how it's little spots? Just like that. Okay. So we did that on the body or our carrot. Now I'm gonna take my little brush and we're gonna make eyes and antenna. So we wanna put our eyes right there. Do you see that little tiny dot and a little tiny dot right there? So see how I came up? I'll make that right there at the top.
And I, I'm doing all this with my brown. And then once you've done that, in between the eyes, give me an antenna. So we're going to do two lines that come up. Okay. Mine is dripping a little bit because I'm. So if you see me moving it, it's just because I'm trying to get it so the water won't fall. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna shade. Does everyone remember from our shading lesson last week? We have all different, it's not so much in watercolor, but we wanna get all our values. So we have really dark with our black and with our brown. So we're gonna shade. The way you shade in watercolor with values is you add water to it. So what does that look like? If I put some brown here and then I add some water, just I have to add a little bit. I have to take some more. See how that shades down? Just adding a little water to it. See how that shades down like that? So I took my brush. I took the brown and I put it right underneath this wing. And then I wipe it off on my paper towel and I get some water, some more water, just clean water, and I shade it down. So it's like we were shading with a pencil like we did last week. Shading under our wing. There we go. Then we're going to come up to the top. We're going to shade right along the top of this wing. Same thing. Put a little line of watercolor and then add some water. And shade it in darken it up so you can see it there you go i did it right along the black line see how i'm doing it along the top right there i put it along the top right here and you just add water okay Okay, so now we've got our shading around here. We've got our body, we've got our eyes, our antenna. Now we're gonna make all these little marks. Oh, we've gotta make our dots, sorry. Take your brown and give me a dot down here in each. This is supposed to look like eyes, they said. So just paint your own brown dot. Your yellow should be mostly dry. It might be a little wet, but it shouldn't be wet enough to smear, okay? Put our round up. It's a little brighter so that you can see it. But this is where your palette comes in. We're going to mix some yellow and brown together. We want to make a light brown. So to do that, I add a lot of water and then I put it in my palette. So I take water and I'm in my yellow and I keep mixing it, mixing it, and then I put it in my palette. Mix it, mix it, put it in my palette. Mix it, mix it, put it in my palette. See how I start getting some of my palette? See that it's this one right here. So, so I've got some right there. Then to get the brown, I add a little brown. See what we have? We have a yellow brown right here. So I mixed, probably I went, to my yellow and I probably put about three brushfuls in there and I've only put one brushful in of the brown. So I've got yellow and brown mixed in my palette with my tiniest brush. So this is how you mix in watercolor. Now the neat thing is if I loved this color, I can mix enough where I need it wet and then I always can come back in and um, let it dry and then just add water the next time I need to use it. 
So I want you to think a little bit about when we made our neurographic art, when we made our abstract piece and we were just drawing lines, we're kind of doing the same thing, but we wanna keep these lines a little straighter. So with my tallest, I'm taking this light color I just mixed and my tiniest brush, and I'm gonna draw a line all the way across, just like that. Anytime I draw a line on one wing, I draw a line on the other. So try and see if you can make your wings the same, like that. So instead of squiggly, I'm just drawing it straight doesn't matter where yours is, okay? Then we're gonna do it again, but we're gonna cross over. So we're gonna come down and make a line like that. So I started right at the top where I'm gonna cross over. Now watercolor always dries lighter than it is, okay? Now I've made mine darker than my original so you can see it easier. But remember, watercolor always dries lighter. So anything we're putting on is gonna be a little bit lighter when it dries. But if I draw a line on this side, I draw a line on the other. So then I'm gonna come back and let's just draw. You can make it any way you want yours to. I have three lines so far, you can have more. I'm gonna put a line that just goes from the top to the, my top line like that. See? Like, the, like our neurographic art, like our abstract, you can make your lines any way you want to. You just wanna make sure if you make a line on the left side on the, or the right side, you make it over here. I don't know which, this is my right side, but I think it's your left side on the screen, so. I'm going to put one more line down the bottom and see it kind of makes an oval like we did before. It went all the way across. And then I'm going to start adding some to the bottom. It's the same thing. So I've got all my lines that crisscross. You can choose to just do a short lines like, but look, if I do a short line there, I have to do a short line over there. So you want every time you do it on one side, you do it on the other. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the bottom. Just, we're gonna start up at the top. Let's come around. Wherever you put that one, you're gonna put it on this side. And wherever I put this one, I'm gonna put them, look, I'm putting one on either side of my dot right there, of my thing that's supposed to look like an eye. I've got two lines coming down. Then I'll just, oh, I'll draw a line from here to that first one, then here to that first one. I think our butterfly is starting to come together. We've got just a few more, and I think we'll have something that you really like. I think I'll draw one line down here. Look at that one. Oh, those are, see, since I made them crooked, I'll do two. <laughs> Just keep adding to get them the same. There, like that. there we go. <laughs> Maybe I'll add one more going across. Just anywhere you want to add. Then I just have a little bit and I'm gonna come and fill in like the smallest holes at the top and the bottom. So I did the first two holes at the top and the bottom and then I'll do kind of my small ones here and my two smallest at the bottom to just round those out. Now here's the fun thing. You can do butterflies all sorts of ways, but I want you to look at the shapes of the bugs. You see a ladybug is just a circle with an oval and a circle on top. So to make the ladybug, 
It's like we have a circle over there, just a circle, oval, oval. Like when we stacked our circles this way, the beetle is strictly an oval, and then you add the legs, an oval with triangle, triangle, and stripes, and then you add the legs. When you look at these, this butterfly is just like the way we did it, but it has scalloped edges. And our bee, we drew the bee in the middle, it's a carrot with a head and our top two wings. So all of those are somehow in this one, but you did modern art that you turned into a butterfly today. So I'll let you, if you haven't finished this one, but I'll show you what this looks like. When you take the tape off, do so very carefully, but wait to take the tape off till you're all done. If you're not finished, just wait and then finish, fill in all your spaces and then take it apart. And it will end up looking, see how it makes a border around it? It will look like just like that. So you'll end up with your own piece of art. And then you think, I'm gonna take something from modern art, 